have two very special Mustangs. Here's what happens when you take an EcoBoost powered rear wheel drive Mustang and you transplant a high performance 2.3 liter engine from a Focus RS hot hatch into the Mustang. What do you do? Well, you have to touch the entire car, including suspension, tires, exhaust, and everything else. And I spoke to the chief engineer, Carl, to learn every detail about these two cars. By the way, the difference between them is also the handling package. Check it out. It's National Mustang Day, and we're in New York where we launched it in 1964 in the World's Fair. Uh, mind blown. Yes. Mind blown. So what do you have behind here? We have an orange car and a blue car. Let's start with what's under the hood. Absolutely. So this is uh, the outcome of uh, having uh, a bunch of passionate engineers yes. and uh, being responsible for Ford Mustang and Ford Performance. Okay. Uh, so the guys got together about a year ago and they keep pushing the envelope on making what is the best EcoBoost we can make. How could you get all the fun to drive, all that passion rolled into that light front end of the EcoBoost? Okay. So we had a chassis development car that we were working on um, and we just said it wasn't, one, wasn't quite what we were looking for. And we happened to have a wrecked RS focus oh. up at headquarters. So we mm. did a, a transplant. So we took the engine out of the RS, stuck it in here, made a few adaptions to make it uh, rear wheel drive. We called the guys at Ford Performance Parts. They gave us a hot cow and we're in business. Uh, and it really, really defined that fun to drive. As you rev up, we've learned from the bullet, it makes a huge difference if you can get 90% of peak horsepower at Redline. And so we were able to do that. We drove the full horsepower up to 330, but we actually get 330 now at 6,000. So you imagine, so from where we've gone at 3,000, the two horsepower curves diverge, and we drag it all the way out to 6,500. So what that does is you can now shift up at Redline and you're pulling power through all the shifts. What it actually did, since we actually got an automatic, uh -huh. we actually changed all the shift points 400 to 600 RPM on the trans calibration. Really? Okay. And so we're down to you know mid four seconds, zero to 60s on the automatics now. And you know, you look at what we did. So the engine's made in Valencia. So the block is a die cast block with Castile liners, same as the RS. We machined the head down a little bit. Uh, to get a little bit lower compression ratio because we wanted a little bit balance of actually getting boost out of it and having a little bit more stable combustion um, just because we've got a broader application. And what we wanted was very particular. We wanted that horsepower curve and then because we're an automatic application, which isn't what the RS has, we wanted a flat torque curve from 3,000 to 5,000. We okay. wanted a whole peak torque. Okay. So it's still 350, but we've raised up that place. So when you're an automatic now, you can shift pretty much on the peak torque curve. Anywhere. Anywhere, so that really brings the automatics to life uh, and gives us a nice tight automatic. So the turbo itself is totally unique. Uh, it was a great meeting. Uh, we met with the Turbo TS and we said, okay, this, we drew, drew our horsepower and our torque curves out and we said, okay, can you give us a turbo wheel design in a week? Uh, so, okay. <laughs> it's, and it's that experience we have in turbocharging that you can lay that out and say, no problem, we can do that, because uh, we really only had about a year to get it to production. And we're able to use what is the Focus RS spark and torque, spark and air fuel tables that was all developed, and we okay. just had to modify with the turbo map. Where's the turbo, on that side? Yep, it's under all these heat shields here. Okay. So, in essence, that's the heart of it, and then the block and the head give you the capability to take that peak pressure. Um, and that peak pressure and that consistency of the pressure gives you the horsepower, and the turbo wheel design gives you the shape of the horsepower curve and the shape of the torque curve. Okay. So that's why we have a little bit less horsepower than the application for RS, is because we really wanted those, a different character in the curves. We weren't shooting for a peak horsepower number, we're shooting for curves in both cases okay. because of the manual and automatic application we have on it. And active exhaust is standard. Okay. Again, from the bullet we learned if you turn, tune the engine to the higher 
flowing lower back pressure exhaust, you get a much better spark curve, much better fuel curve. And then for this, to give that fun to drive experience, we've set up the exhaust system, same as Bullet. So on throttle, you got the power, Whoop. off you got the pop, okay. yeah. Okay. So it gives you that sense of the car is with you, it's egging you on, mm -hmm. same kind of thing. Um, we were able to do this all with really no weight change on the front end because it's all really the same general weight for heads, blocks. Yeah, they're made in Spain, shipped over to us. Um, different calibrations for transmission, brake controls, uh, engine. And because the weight hasn't changed, you still have that nimbleness. And that gets into how we use that power is really between well, these two setups is the two different chassis we have available. So let's talk about this chassis because this is also the handling package. Yes. Right? We want to improve the aerodynamics of it so we can increase the VMAX. So the VMAX is up to 155 miles an hour in this package okay. now. Uh, so it's actually a performance pack V8 splitter and underbelly pan so it gives you brake cooling. We've gone to unique grills. Again, we wanted to give a premium sense to it. Sure. And because some customers will come to it that are looking for that. Uh, the EcoBoost customer um, is, is, we know it's more tech savvy customer, so 140 plus horsepower per liter is right up their alley. And then we wanted to give them some signal that it is different and we wanted to do it with a really aspect to quality or premiumness. So we've taken some of the tricks we did on the bullet where we've actually painted upper and lower grills to give it that nice classy look to it. And just a real light touch on stripes, right? Very light. Um, wheels, so it is, it's a Pirelli Corsa attire made in Italy. And it is, you know, same kind of thing as a cup. It's, it's a semi-slick. And this is the handling pack. It's a handling pack. And so it's we, a wider wheel, right? Yeah, it's a half inch wider wheel, <laughs> front and rear. Um, but we want to signal that the customer's making that choice for grip and losing all weather performance. So we did that again with the wheel to show that and from the base wheel, a little bit classier look on the base. Um, this comes standard Magneride. Again, what we've learned in time when we go to a tire like this, we really don't do two shock setups. We might as well just do Magneride because you're going to get the ultimate performance out of it. Okay. And then we had to basically increase bar diameters, go with it, all that good stuff, retune the chassis. Where does it all stop? Where does it all stop? <laughs> What's good, as the Skunks Works projects, okay. the guys do it, they finish their regular job and they're so passionate about it, they'll go do all this stuff. Okay. And then, because it was going so fast, this particular package has semi met pads on it. <laughs> so the brake control guys, okay. so the vehicle dynamics said, hey, I need semi met pads, the brake control guys are going, no problem, we'll work next Saturday and we'll retune the brake controls to work with semi met pads. Okay. Um, so it's a nice package uh, to give you that ultimate performance, and that's what really drives the handling pack, but we, we leave that as a really limited application just because you gotta know what you're getting into when you get that. So let me get this straight, okay? You just gave me a lot of information here, right? <laughs> so you got your 2.3 base yep. Mustang EcoBoost, yep. right? And you can have it manual or automatic. Yeah. Now you put basically an RS high performance version of that. Right, so think uh, of, underneath. So think about this. We have a performance pack today on those vehicles. Yes. We eliminate that and we replace it with something that has an engine, a chassis, and a light exterior package. Okay. And so that is a check the box package mm -hmm. on our three different series. And it can be picked against manual automatic, coupe convertible. Okay. And the exhaust also. Standard, uh, yes. Yeah, and, you get a lot for the package, really. Right, you, right. Get, you get the old chassis system of a performance pack, you get an RS motor, you get appearance, and you get active exhaust standard with it. So it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of bundled content, but in this case, it all works together that if you got this high performance engine, you'd want active exhaust. You want everything else, you want the whole thing. You want the whole thing. Right. And so for us, we approached it, we weren't gonna, we we're gonna keep that together, and leave interior as your selection, if you think about it that way. So you can get, still get Recaro. You can still you get Recaro. It's funny, we have these two cars. This is the most you can ever spend on an interior, and that's the least. Okay. Do you have the pricing for HPP yet? No, no, no we're still working through that. Okay. Still working through that. Okay. How does it sound? So we talked about the exhaust. Is it similar to the RS? Is it different? It's different. Um, so what we did is we have a unique tune to this one and we wanted to get as pure a sound as we could out of it, and then we wanted that on-off throttle difference. Okay. 
So it's a little bit different just because of our architecture that we have and it's um, in the world that we're in now versus where we were three years ago, it, the world's a little bit different in regulations too. Okay, I gotcha. All right, well, I can't wait to drive it because I look at the EcoBoost Mustang it's kind of a little bit more precise yeah. handling machine, right? I mean, of course, you got your V8 cars, yeah. the big cars, but those cars are, I don't think I have enough skill, you know, to drive some of those big, huge V8 cars, but this I feel like a little bit more comfortable in. This one you can throw around on a tight, tight track uh, that is just, and again, that's why the team was so passionate about doing the, the work on it as, as a passion project, really, okay. because, to get it all done in a less than a year and, and get all the content put together on top of the regular job they're doing was, was because big. because they themselves believe this general concept of we could push this vehicle from its weight distribution with more power, power to redline, and then the latest thinking we have on chassis tuning to really push it to where it can be as the ultimate. And then we were just Working with Valencia was a big critical part to get the engine because it's not, it had to be rear wheel drive. Yeah, 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 true. Yeah, that's right. so, so we had to change the block to add on engine mounts and, you know, totally new turbo. And oh boy. We, you know, so they were tremendously supportive of it. And then, and then we find that between the Ford Performance and Mustang plants that we work with, the engine plants and the assembly plants will bend over backwards to, to bring these exciting products to life. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Thanks. My mind is exploding because now you have so many different variants of the Mustang. You have the base 2.3, you have the performance pack, then you have Magnarite suspension. Now you can put it all together in this HPP high performance pack. And of course, you have the V8 cars and everything else. But the important part is for the enthusiast, if you really love your performance, it's the greatest day because you can pick and choose exactly what you want and you can get it. Go back to tflcar.com for my news views and real world car reviews.